Today we're going to be tackling partial themes. Maybe I can make that sound a lot spookier in the editing process. <laughs> So I found this block called Grandmother's Puzzle in one of my kind of block library resource books. And I thought it was a really fun, kind of modern looking block, despite the kind of Grandmother's Puzzle <laughs> um, antique kind of name to it. And I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to talk about partial seams. So today I'm making the 12 and a half inch version of this block. The other sizes in the pattern instructions are a layer cake version and a fat quarter version. Now, both of the cutting instructions for those sizes include all of the pieces for the block being cut from either a single layer cake or a single fat quarter. So if you wanna use multiple colors in your designs, you can do three layer cakes, cut them all identically, and then shuffle them to get a nice kind of color assortment. I'm cutting all of my fabrics from my fun bundle that I make all of my block study blocks out of. So I'm just cutting for the 12 and a half inch size here. This fabric line is from Juicy Juice. It is a really nice kind of speckled blender print. And I'm using one of the white with gray speckles as my background color. I didn't pre-starch my fabrics here, but I kind of wish I had considering there's so many triangles to be cut for this block. So if you're working ahead and starting from scratch, then I really recommend giving a little starch here as you are preparing your fabrics. So now that all my pieces are cut, it is time to lay out this block. I'm gonna be following this expanded block layout, which just shows you how all of the pieces fit together. And I'm just gonna lay it all out on my little mat here right next to my sewing machine. I'm usually a big advocate of chain piecing, but in case like this, there's a lot of complexity going on in this block. So at least the first time you do it, I really recommend laying the entire block out like this and taking it seam by seam. Let's talk assembly strategy a little bit. We don't have any seams that go all the way across our block, so we're gonna have to break it up a little bit. We have these two corners here that are kind of nice isolated little islands. And then we have this area up here that is kind of an island unto itself. We'll deal with this section later because this is where our partial seam is going to be. So things will be a little bit trickier here. But for the meantime, we can get these three areas completely assembled. I'm going to assemble kind of this triangle of these three pieces first. And I'm just gonna attach the white to the blue, press it open and then attach the other white triangle. And I'm gonna be aligning these 90 degree edges when I sew. And there will be some overhang with these white triangles, but I'm gonna let that happen. We can trim those dog ears off, but it's more important that the 90 degree kind of corners of these pieces line up so that we have nice straight edges to our block. I'm gonna cut this dog ear off and place this back in its place so I can make sure it's all oriented the right way. And then I'm gonna take this white piece, put it right sides together, and once again, align those 90 degree corners. And we will have a little tail that hangs off and that's totally okay. Something you're looking for with accuracy and seam allowances, see how my stitch line comes right to the valley in these two kind of angled pieces? That means that this line and this line are gonna form a nice straight angle when I press this open. Once I snip off that dog ear, see how that's a nice flat line? If my stitching line didn't come to that valley, I would have a little jog. So let's say I stitched it and it came to, came to here. When I open this up, let me just finger press that. See how there's a jog in the line? It's at this level here, and then it jogs down and continues this line here. You really want that to be nice and straight so that when we sew it to this piece here, we have a nice straight line to join. Because there are so many bias edges here, I'm just taking a moment to be really gentle with how I align these edges. These triangles should match up perfectly, and I'm just going to stick a couple pins in here to make sure that everything is perfect before I sew it in place. So 
see where these threads cross? That is the point of our square. So I'm gonna make sure that I stitch just to the seam allowance side of that cross. So here we have our nice perfect little corner unit. I'm gonna repeat that here and then here again. And then once this piece is together, I'll be able to join these corner pieces on, just like if this was like a four patch. And then we'll be ready to tackle this corner, which is where our partial seam is gonna be. Almost done. We are in the home stretch. We have our three kind of easily pieced units all done. And now it's time to deal with this kind of mess over here in the corner. Now our partial seam is right here where these two pieces come together because we have a corner here that we're going to need to insert into this corner. So we need to make some adjustments there. Let's get the easy stuff out of the way first. These four pieces go together pretty easily, like a four patch with a corner left off. So I'm going to sew those together right now. Now we just have these two little floating pieces left and we are going to sew half of each of these seams. So this is one of those times where you just need to trust the process kind of the first time you do it because it doesn't really seem like it's gonna work. We are gonna sew these two white triangles to this orange triangle, but we are not gonna sew anything kind of in the middle third of this triangle's edge. So I'm gonna match up these triangles and I'm matching them up right to this kind of outer edge using that little dog ear before I trim it off. So if it would help you to grab a pen and kind of mark the kind of opening that we're gonna leave, then grab a kind of pen that's gonna disappear with heat or water and just kind of mark about three inches or so in the middle of this seam. And so we're gonna start here. We're gonna sew to here. I'm gonna do a little couple of stitches back stitch and I'm gonna stop, cut my thread, go to here, couple stitches back stitch and then off the edge. So now we have this super weird shape with these like dog ear edges that aren't sewn down. But here's what that allows us to do. Before there wasn't an easy way to assemble this block, but now since we have this part of this seam sewn, we have this edge available to us. It's completely sewn, it's secure, and now we can sew these together. And we have the same situation over here. Sewing that first little bit of the seam allowed us to have this edge. So now we can sew these two pieces on. Now we'll leave this mess in the middle for the next step when we insert this. But for now, we're gonna make this kind of L-shaped unit for our block. And this seam is just like any normal seam. It's totally secure. Just ignore that kind of mess that's going on down there but we are just gonna line up our edges. I'm gonna clip that dog ear off before we start and sew the seam. So now we're to the end, it's the last lap. We have our weird L-shaped wonky thing and we have our square. Now leaving these two edges of these triangles open allows us to have access to this edge without this triangle being in the way. If we had stitched this down, then we couldn't sew this square to this edge because it would be stitched down already. So not having it stitched down means that we can just put these edges right sides together and sew that seam. It's pretty normal. There's just a lot of fabric that's gonna be kind of flopping around in the background, but just ignore it. Concentrate on the seam you are sewing. 
So I'm going to align these corners and I am going to make use of pins here just to keep everything as tidy as possible. There's really only one seam that's going to match up and it's between this triangle and this kind of center square. But other than that, just kind of ease it in, line up those edges, and then we're going to sew it. You will have a little dog ear of that white triangle hanging off and that's okay. We have half of our block here and it needs to be joined to this side unit. Now we have the edge free since we didn't stitch it down to this orange triangle. So now if you just kind of lay the block as close as it can be, you can fold it on that seam and line it up. Now you're gonna be sewing towards the center of your block and you might need to just tuck that orange triangle out of the way. If you need to pin it out of the way to make yourself feel better or to make sure it doesn't get caught, then then definitely grab a pin and do that. I'm just gonna take a little extra time and pin the seam really carefully. And then we're gonna sew it just like a normal seam. As I approach this corner where kind of the center of the block is, I'm using my fingers to make sure I can only feel two layers of fabric. And as I get even closer, I'm just gonna tilt it up and make sure that that orange fabric is just tucked out of the way. So I have only two layers of fabric that I'm sewing through. Our block looks almost done, but we have one final thing to take care of, our partial seam. Now it looks like we have a big hole in our quilt, but this seam just needs to be completed. So this is the seam we left partially open. We sewed from one corner to here, stopped, skipped the middle, and then sewed from here to the edge. And now we just need to fill in that gap. I'm gonna grab some pins. Now these are bias edges, so if they have stretched at all kind of while you're working on these seams, then just try to ease them back together as best you can. They're both bias seams, so they will kind of stretch together if you need to um, make it work. Now I'm gonna sew from about here, kind of back stitching and then crossing over those same stitch lines that I did the first time we sewed this seam. And I'm gonna extend and stitch over the stitches again on the other side. So I'm sewing a little bit longer than what we left open last time, just to make sure this is nice and secure. You don't have to worry about these edges being kind of inaccessible to you because they're already sewn down. So you don't have to worry about them. So from here to here, and then we're done. And that last few inches of seam is the very last of this block. It is all done. And you can't even tell how you put it together because there's no seam that goes all the way across the block. So it feels a little like magic. This is the 12 and a half inch version. I also made the 10 inch version, which is kind of adorable. And then I made this big fat quarter version. So for the fat quarter, you can get all of the print pieces that you need for this block from one fat quarter. So to get all the different colors in the block, you'll need to cut three fat quarters, shuffle the colors, and then make three blocks. Or it's a great opportunity to use up some odds and ends and make a big block. If you want to catch up on block study or see the blocks we've done in the past, some videos are popping up in the screen right now. And I will be back in about a week with another quilty video. So happy quilting until then. Then I would really macarette, macarend. <laughs>